What's up guys, Matt Prince from Royal Fitness. Now today we're gonna to go into the kettlebell swing. Right, kettlebell swings are one of my all time favorite exercises. I love them, they are the, I think they're one of those in between exercises that when you get pure strength, and you have pure speed. So say you're like, you know, you're really good at squatting and deadlifting, and then you're really good at jumping. This is sort of that in-between. It teaches you to move really heavy weight with your hips with real good speed as well. So brilliant exercise, teaches a lot of things to move together. You can use it for conditioning in high reps. You can use it for low reps with speed and power. I love it. It's just one of those things. For me, it's, it's rehabbed my back. It's made my back feel really strong, built my glutes, all that. Um, it's, it's made me jump higher, run faster, all that stuff. Really, really good exercise, and it's worked for so many different people. So with this swing, there's a few things that I want you to understand, right? It's, it's what they call a hip hinge. So if you think of like a deadlift position, so your butt comes back and then come through, that's what a hinge movement is as opposed to a squatting movement. The, dead, the kettlebell swing is a hinge, okay? So you need to make sure you've learned how to push your hips back, engage your hamstrings, your glutes, keeping all this nice and flat. You need to make sure you're doing that right before you start swinging. So you need to learn how to kettlebell deadlift. You need to learn how to do the deadlift pattern, the hinge pattern. Once you get that and you're starting to feel comfortable with it, your form's good, then you can start to add swings in and you can build from there. Um, the second thing I wanna talk about with the kettlebell, the finish point is similar to a plank. Right, so you're in this position where you're locked in, abs are tight, glutes are on, quads are tensed, everything's aligned, right? So you, you're literally from this hinge position, you snap it up and you end up in this tight, like almost vertical plank position, right? Everything's just engaged. So you need to think about those two positions because the start and the power, right? If you do it wrong with a lot of weight and you end up say, you know, leaning back or whatever with like you know, 80 kilos or something, that's not good for you, right? And it means that you're not gonna have good control coming through. Same if you don't have a good hip hinge and you're swinging like this. I can't, I don't know if I'm rolling good, but you say you're rolling down like that, there's no good control. That's not good for you either. There's a higher risk of injury and um, you don't want that, right? So make sure you've got your hinge down, you've got your planks, planks and all those sorts of movements down so everything's nice and strong. Now, the next thing with the kettlebell swing that I'll talk about is sort of the angle of the bell, right? So a lot of people, you think about the bell, right? And the bell, it, it sort of works on a bit of a pendulum. So it's sort of coming up, imagine like a wrecking ball almost, your arms like the string, the kettlebell's the wrecking ball, sort of swinging up and down. People generally push their force one way or the other. So they either go up, and they do like this, this squatty type movement, which again, eliminates the hinge, makes it you know, an inefficient kettlebell swing, um, or they go straight out. So they end up like pushing that way and end up that pulls them forward. So you almost need to think about the angle of going like forwards and up, almost like a, you know, a direct line going that way. That's how I like to think of the kettlebell swing. I'm sort of propelling the weight up towards the sky and then I'm letting it come back through. Um, and that's helped me a lot. Some people it doesn't help that, that, that sort of chat, but have a play with it and see what happens. It, when you do it, it'll make sense. If you drive all your weight forwards, like say if you were doing a broad jump or something like that, or a hip thrust, you'll find that the bell takes you that way. If you go upwards, you'll find that you're doing too, too straight up with the chest. It'd be more like a squat sort of uh, squat swing, which isn't, I don't think that's an ideal movement. There's better ways to train that pattern. Um, so that's, that's some things to think about. now. Next thing with the swing uh, that you wanna think about is the height of the swing. Okay, so when you're learning to swing heavier weights, I'm okay with people swinging small, you know, small swings. Once you master the bell, you're ready to move on, but you have to make sure you master it first. If you don't have the bell before uh, the one you wanna try down and you're not nailing it and you've got good form and it's all pretty, you shouldn't do it, right? So I'll show you what that means. So when I'm swinging, if I get the kettlebell, and I, I, I bring it out in front, set myself up, get me hinge, get me core tight, everything ready. And I start, I do a little swing, pre-swing boom. If I'm swinging like this high, right? Elbows are tucked in. This is a really good way to adapt to a heavier weight because the bell's in, there's not much, you know, not much room for error because everything's nice and tight. I'll play with that on the heavier bells. And that's a, that's a good, safe way to do it, right? But as I wanna move up, I'm not gonna move up with that form until I've got the next form down, which is a straight arm one to say chest height. Okay, once I've got that down for say 10 reps and it's feeling really confident, really comfortable, then I'll progress up to the next bell and I might start in a little bit or you know just out a little bit, but I won't progress straight to there, okay? Unless I'm definitely ready for it, okay? So when we're here, you've got this, this angle, good way to adapt to a bell. You're still getting the hip angles, you're still getting your core, boom, but, Big difference between that and that. That's significantly harder, significantly more force, significantly more power. So I'd suggest to do that first, right? Get to that point where you can do that. 
and then build it as you go. Um, the next thing with kettlebell swings, the down motion, right? When you're pushing it up, allowing the, the arms to relax, you're not sort of pulling all that. If you're doing that right, the belt should just feel weightless. Right? On the way down though, you need to brace your lats really tight and brace your core because it's coming down. Right, you've got weight that's sort of moving you know, faster than, than, uh, than gravity allows it because it's you know, 24, 48, 80, 92 kilos, whatever bells you have. You need to make sure that you're bracing yourself on the way down. So I actively pull the weight down, uh, but I'm not trying to do it in a way that's uh, super fast to make it harder on myself. I'm doing it more in, in a way to brace it for myself. So as I swing, let it come up, I'll make sure my lats engage on the way through so everything's rocked in here if i if i don't get my lats tight similar to a squat and a deal if i don't tense up my lats my upper back will roll and it'll feel less stable okay so there's some things to think about now one last point before I'll, I'll leave it for the day is when you're swinging you really have to think about your feet okay so i've talked about the glutes talked about the hip hinge talked about you know the, the plank the finish position but your feet really matter okay so you want to find a stance that's really strong and you want to make sure, I always think about like gripping the ground, like think of squeezing your toes in and you sort of squeeze the ground there and what that will do, it'll give you a little bit more stability. If you're relaxing in your feet, you swing a heavy bell, come up onto your toes, you're going to find that you want to jump forward or, or worse, you might fly forward, right? Same thing, if you lean back too much, you're not gripping, you'll lose balance that way. So you need to make sure that your feet are gripped and then as you swing in the heavy weight, your, the weight and your body are sort of counteracting each other. Right, so you've got that tension here, you've got that tension here, everywhere, but your feet are what planting. So you might go, all right, sweet, I've got a heavy bell coming here, right, as opposed to heavy bell up here and then trying to you know, reset it. It's just a lot more strength involved and a lot more stability involved when, you, when your feet are planted properly. It'll just feel better, okay? So um, as with everything, practice the form, get the form right first, get the movement down, and then build over time. But make sure that you're doing it with the intent of moving the weight really, really quickly, but doing it in a way that's coming from your hips, your core, everything like that, um, and rather than just lifting it with your arms and, and you know doing it sort of like a front shoulder raise. Um, if you ever get told to do it overhead like that, and then swing it back through. I would highly recommend trying it the other way uh, and, and, and seriously consider avoiding that, uh, that style of kettlebell training because there is a lot of other things that can go wrong in those uh, overhead kettlebell swings that just aren't talked about. But usually if you know, you've got weight dropping, like 24 kilos or more dropping from overhead between your, between your legs, some shit can go wrong. So just keep that in mind when you're doing that. I always recommend stop at chest height. It doesn't need to be higher. If you're going higher, you probably should just be going heavier rather than adding more risk um, you know, by going overhead and build, build strategically over time. Anyway, that's all I've got for you today. If you have any questions about the swing, let us know, or training in general, let us know. Um, if you are interested in joining us at Royal Fitness, you want to get, get involved, we have a trial offer going at the moment. Shoot us a message, we'll tell you the details. But guys, swing hard, swing heavy, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.